This is experiment 25, qualitative analysis. Everything we have done so far has been quantitative analysis, meaning we determine how much of something was present. This experiment is based on qualitative analysis. Basically, we want to determine the components in the mixture. Does the sample have iron, copper, etc.? Now, how do we determine if the metals are present? We'll add reagents to the solutions which will cause certain metals to precipitate out, basically doing selective precipitation. This depends on the pH, etc. In other cases, we will add reagents which will com complex the metals and cause color changes indicating the presence of a particular metal or not. What we have here is a flow diagram of the experiment that we're going to do. We're going to have we're going to have a known and an unknown. Okay, we're going to have a known that has all the different metals involved, and then you're also going to have an unknown that may have one to five of these metals in it. And you're going to run the procedure exactly like we're doing for the known. I suggest you go ahead and do them at the same time. Uh, that way we can compare them as you go through it to see if you have a positive result or not. I also suggest that when you're doing this experiment, don't go in the order of the um, manual, jump around, otherwise everybody would be fighting for the same chemical. So it doesn't matter which order you do the experiment. So when you're using the centrifuge, you want to make sure that it's balanced. Okay, If you put a sample on one side, you need another sample across from it, either a, another test tube of your sample or a thing of water that we can kind of balance it. Also, there's a case where we got to do some heating of solutions, so you might want to start heating your water at the beginning of the lab. That way it's ready for you when you're trying to do that part of the experiment. And any heating that we're going to do will be with the hot plates, not with any flame. So, you have your, your unknown and your known solution. First thing you're going to do is you're going to add two drops of six molar nitric acid and 20 drops of six molar ammonia to it. Then you can plate that into the centrifuge. What's going to happen here is it's going to have some solid form, and the liquid and the solid is going to separate. So you can decant the, the liquid off. Okay, so here's be your liquid part. And then we're going to do all the testing with the liquid, and then you have your solid over here. In the solid, the possibilities are there's aluminum, iron, and manganese there. We have to do more testing to see which metals are there. For the liquid, you have all the other ones, calcium, co uh, cobalt, copper, magnesium, etc., that are capable of being in that solution. So we have to do other tests on that portion of the, portion of the sample. So the solid you go in, you want to determine if you have aluminum, iron, or magnesium. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to add 20 drops of one molar sodium hydroxide to that. We're going to centrifuge it. What happens there is aluminum will be aqueous. So if I have any aluminum, it'd be in the liquid portion. And if I still have any <clears throat> iron or manganese, it'd still be in a solid form. And then we go on and do other testing. For the aluminum, we'll test it with 2 molar um, acetic acid until it's acidic. And then if I have aluminum there, what should happen is I should get a white precipitate. If I do this for my unknown and I get no precipitate, there's nothing there, then that means I have no aluminum. Now for the for the um, known, you should get positive results of everything. For the unknown, you will not get positive results of everything. So then you go on with the solid part. You add 40 drops of water and stir in 6 molar nitric acid until the solid dissolves, and so on and so forth. Um, if you did the first step and you got no solid, say you got no solid on your unknown, that would mean that you don't have any aluminum, any iron, any manganese. You don't have to do any of that, okay, if you got zero solid. But if you got any solid, and you got to figure out which one it is, which metal is causing as part of that solid. So as I said, you're going to go through this process in this diagram and keep going through till you figure out which metals you have in your solution. It could be anywhere from one to five different type of metals. You must do the complete known set for this experiment, and you also must bring this diagram to the, to the lab.